Okay, now we have a narrow band normalization script available to us within Cyril. It's brought to you by the same developer that's been giving us all the other Verilux scripts. The Hypermetric Stretch, Star Composer, he's up to five scripts now in the Verilux suite. This one that we're going to go over is the Verilux Alchemy script. Like I said, narrow band normalization as well as mixing. It's intended to be used with data that you've shot with a one-shot color camera using a dual narrow band filter, as well as narrow band data that was shot in mono. One thing to keep in mind, very important, the script is to be used on linear data only so you run it before you do any stretching at all on your image so let's check it out my name is rich and you're watching deep space astro all right so first thing we need to do obviously is get the script installed so as usual we'll come up into scripts and then get scripts locate the Verilux alchemy script in the list put a tick box to the right and then click apply and today we're going to be working with my rosette nebula so i have already stacked the rosette come into an auto stretch view and this was just stacked using if we come up into scripts and serial scripts the osc pre-processing script the image was also shot behind my optolong l extreme dual narrowband filter but you can follow this process with any dual narrowband filter that you may have been using so it doesn't have to be an optolong l extreme it could be any other filter that you have that is marked from the manufacturer as a dual narrowband filter for your one shot color camera will work just fine, including the dual narrowband filter that's built into the C-Stars. So the first thing we want to do after our stack, just showing you guys where the Verilux Alchemy script is going to be inserted into my workflow. So this isn't going to be a complete end-to-end -end workflow, but again, just to show you where you would insert this into your process. So we're going to start by doing a quick crop to get rid of any of the stacking artifacts. Once the crop is done, I'm going to do a background extraction. So Python scripts, processing, auto BGE. You can use whichever background extraction tool that you wish. That's fine. Default settings are good and process. All right, so background extraction is complete. We'll close that. And again, optional step, but I like to sharpen at this point in my workflow. So scripts, Python scripts, processing, and Cosmic Clarity Sharpen. I'm going to set it to both, so it does both stellar and non-stellar. Again, defaults are good for purpose of the video, and click Apply. All right, so sharpening is complete. Close that, and I'm going to remove the stars, so I'm working just on the nebula. It's part of my normal workflow. You don't necessarily have to remove the stars. I'm going to recommend that you do remove the stars if you're going to be using the Verilux Alchemy script, only because as we're changing the color palette for the nebula, it's also going to be changing the colors of the stars, and, and the stars will not look natural at all. So I like to remove the stars first, work just on the nebula as normal, and then at the end of the process, we'll put the stars back in. So to remove the stars, we'll come up in the image processing, star processing, and Starnet star removal, pre-stretch linear image, and generate star mask is all we need, and just click execute. All right, so stars have been removed, and you've probably noticed I did not do any color calibration at all. It is recommended not to do any color calibration when you're getting ready to run the Alchemy script, right? The Alchemy script is going to modify the colors that we're seeing in the image anyway, so color calibration isn't buying us anything at all. So now we're ready to run the script. So I'm going to come up into scripts, Python scripts, Verilux, and Verilux Alchemy. Just like the other Verilux scripts that have a preview window, you have your plus and minus buttons to zoom, you have your one-to-one -to, -one to go 100%, and you have your fit button to fit the image to the screen. When you're zoomed in, left mouse button, hold it down, and you can pan around the image. All the normal stuff we're used to seeing. So let's go through the settings. This is really simple to use. The first thing you wanna do is select your sensor. If your sensor is not listed, then stick with generic OSC, OSC meaning one shot color, Mine is the IMX 571. So our next option under the sensor profile section is quantum unmixing. Default it is off and when it's in the off position and if you hover over the option you'll get a tool tip as always. You can see down the bottom it says when it's off Alchemy uses the classic mapping. So HA is your red channel and O3 is green plus blue divided by two. So this is good if you have already generated for example your HOO image maybe you've extracted HA and O3 using the serial scripts that we have to do so 
and then made your composite from those. At that point, there's really no crosstalk. Your HOO has already been composited and completed upstream from running the Alchemy script. So there really isn't any need to enable this option. But since I stacked my LXtreme dual narrowband data without doing any separation, I am going to enable the quantum unmixing since it knows my sensor be able to remove the crosstalk in the image. And crosstalk meaning like where the HA leaks into the green pixels or the O3 leaks into the red pixels. And that's what this unmixing is doing. So again, it mathematically give us the best representation of these palettes during the mixing process. Next is our normalization. So by default, background neutralization and the auto signal fit, as you can see, is enabled. The background neutralization aligns the medium black point of all the channels to the red. And the auto signal fit will automatically calculate the gain to match the O3 signal strength to the HA. Recommend that you leave them both on. See if I decide disable it, the effect that it's having on the image, either one or both of them, so you get a better understanding of how it's actually affecting the data in the image. Again, I leave them both enabled. I think that's probably the best bet. The slider down here, our O3 boost, is a manual gain for the O3, so if you wanted to boost the blue cyan that you see in your image, move the slider over to the right, and you can see it's injecting more of the O3 into your image. Again, as always with the Viralux scripts, if you double click on the sliders, it'll reset back to the default position. That leads us into our palette mixer, which includes sliders for the red, green, and blue channel, as well as three presets that you can see down here on the bottom. Default preset is HOO, that's what we're looking at right now. Then what that means is you can see underneath our red slider that 100% of HA is set for the red channel, 100% of O3 is set for the green, and 100% of O3 is set for the blue. You can adjust these manually. So if you wanted to start with an HOO type palette and you can come in and you can adjust the sliders while you're watching your preview. And you'll notice as I move the red over, now my red channel consists of 77% of HA and 23% of O3. So it's doing a blend for us as you move back and forth. So nothing wrong with playing with your sliders and just going for a different palette. You don't have to use the presets whichever you like. So let's put those back to their defaults for now. Like I said, HOO loads up as the default preset. We can go to the pseudo SHO, and the only adjustment that it made was at the green channel. It put 50% HA and 50% O3. And then to take a quick look at our HSO preset, and again, it just made a change to our green channel, setting it to 100% HA. So for this demo, let's go for the SHO look. Get the golds around the edge, right? I like to try to pull up and get some of the cyan and blue, the O3 in the center of the rosette. So I can start with my boost and just bump that over a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy because it does affect the entire image, not just the center where I actually want to see the blue. But again, it's just playing with the slider. So whatever you like, if I wanted to try to get the golds out a little bit more, maybe adjust my greens over to the red so i'm putting more of the o3 into the green channel than i am the ha get it to where you like it the last step is just to click process so there's our pseudo sho image you can see i'm still in an auto stretch view we are still linear so that's our next step is to stretch the data so i'm going to go back into linear and you can stretch however you like right you can come up in the image processing and go into stretches and you can do your histogram or your GHS. But as you're probably already aware, if you're watching this video, Viralux has its own stretching algorithm script. So that's what we're going to use. So I'll come up into scripts, Python scripts, Viralux, and the Viralux hypermetric stretch. I have a video on how to use this tool. So I'm not going to go over how to actually use it. We're just going to run it, click our live preview. I'll leave my target background at 0.2. Hit the auto button to calculate our log D value. I'm going to run with that and click process. Click close when it's done and there's our stretched image. At this point, process the data however you would process it further. For me, for example, maybe my background was a little bit too light. I should have set that lower. So I'm just going to come into stretches and curves and just pull the background down a little bit more and maybe just a slight bit more. We'll give it an S curve just to brighten it up. You get the idea. Go through your normal workflow at this point in time, but we're done with the script. That's where you would use it in your normal day-to-day -day processing of whatever data that you're working with. Once you're complete working on the star list, make sure you hit your save button, and now we can recombine the stars. In a similar fashion, you could come over to image processing, star processing, and use star recomposition 
But again, Viralux has a script to recompose the stars back into our image for us, so we're going to stick with using the Viralux suite. But once again, scripts, Python scripts, Viralux, and Viralux Star Composer. Again, I have a video that covers this as well, so we're not going to do a deep dive here. We're just going to use it to put the stars back in. So I'm going to load my star mask, which is created when we remove the stars previously. And then we're going to load the starless. Make sure that you do not select the file that says starless. That was when we initially removed the stars. You want to make sure you select the Viralux Alchemy linear file. That is the starless stretched image that we just worked on in Cyril. And you can see the file name up here as well. So that is our starless. It pops it in. Stretch in your stars to your liking and then click process. So that's it. So that's just a quick workflow to show you where to use the Viralux Alchemy script using data that was taken with the Optolong L-Extreme dual narrow band filter. So Ricardo is on a roll with these scripts he's been giving us. He just keeps cranking them out and I'm sure he's got other ideas for other scripts that he'll be releasing in the coming days for us as well. So before we go, as always, I want to say thanks to all of my members here on YouTube and on buymeacoffee.com. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for everybody that watches the videos, shares it, recommends it. It's all very much appreciated. If you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member. Along with your membership, you'll get free access to my beginner's guide for Serial 1.4. I have affiliate links down in the description, so if you make any purchases using those links, I get a small commission based on your purchase at no extra cost to you guys. Again, appreciate everybody's time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and clear skies.